All right, we're going to continue our discussion on graphing. This time we're going to pretty much finish up everything there is to graphing sinusoidal functions. So today we're going to be focusing on shifts. And, uh, and the first one is going to be the horizontal shift uh, or the translation. Translation is uh, from geometry. It's just a movement that's either left or right or up and down. In the case of horizontal translation, you'll notice that the original um, function was this blue one right here, right? And it shifted over. So this is the shift that it experienced. However, notice the formula, okay? Uh, so the original blue formula was y is equal to sine x, and you want to sign parenthesis x plus pi over 2. And so for some reason, something changed in the original function to go ahead and shift it horizontally. So horizontal translation is left or right. In the second case, we have a vertical translation. Again, here's the original, the blue one, y is equal to negative 2 sine pi x. And you'll notice that with a vertical translation, there's a new addition to the formula. And what it did in this case, if you notice the arrows, it took each point and brought it down a certain amount. So every point on the blue graph got dropped the same distance at any given point you can find. So the entire graph shifted downward. The vertical shift is responsible for up or down movement only. Okay. So problem one, what does a horizontal, a horizontal shift do to the graph? Well, it moves it left or right. Okay. What is the change in the actual equation? So if you recall, uh, with a horizontal shift, the original equation looked like this. The new addition was another number or another term in the argument. So the actual change in the equation was uh, adding or subtracting a term in the argument. So there was adding or subtracting a term in the argument. And incidentally, if you didn't notice, that if it's positive, it goes left. So this is positive, but it ended up going left, which means if we were to uh, subtract a term, right, if we were to do x minus pi over 2, then it would have shifted the graph to the right. So a positive inside the argument results in a, a, a left shift. A negative in the argument results in a right shift. Shift. So it's kind of the opposite. It's the only time you're going to encounter that with these kinds of graphs. Part C. What does a vertical shift do to the graph? Well, it moves it up or down. What does it do to the asymptotes in the max and the min? Well, just as we discussed in part C and we showed you previously, it's going to shift everything over. So you know, up or down. So as we, the easiest way to move the graph up or down is to go ahead and actually move the max and the min, along with the other points that make up the graph. Okay, so uh, it moves them up or down as well. We'll show you more details as we do some of those problems. E, what is a change in the actual equation for the vertical uh, shift? So when we saw this, you'll notice that uh, there was an additional term that was added to the front. Okay, this is a standalone term. This term is not in the argument. In case you're wondering what is the argument, for example, if I have something like this, x uh, 2x plus 3, this entire thing right here is the argument. Essentially, anything inside of the parentheses. If I have y is equal to sine 2x, well, you can put that in parentheses and then 2 would be part of the argument. So what happened here is that we added an additional term outside of the argument. They don't always have to be in the front. It could be in the back. So we could have written uh, this one as y is equal to negative 2 sine pi x minus 3, okay, which is probably how we will usually write these problems in class. Take a moment to go ahead and uh, address this summary. How do shifts differ from amplitude and period. We refer to 
these uh, equations up here as a standard form. These are the standard form of a sinusoidal function. Okay, you'll notice that we've discussed uh, before a and b. Remember that a affects the amplitude, b affects the period. Now we've added on uh, two more variables, uh, variable c in the argument, and then a variable k that's going to be outside of the argument. And these will be responsible for the various translations or shifts that we're going to see in graphs. So you are familiar with amplitude already. We've shown you this before, and the period, 2 pi over b. The new thing is going to be the horizontal shift. Okay, and some some uh, some books in some places they call it the phase shift. So if you happen to be tutoring with somebody else or watching Khan Academy, they might refer to it as the phase shift. Okay, in order to calculate this, you're going to take the values from your original equations, and you're going to take the ratio of them, the negative ratio. This is very important. Don't forget there's a negative right here. Okay, you might have to do a keep flip change in the process, and then the vertical translation is simply k, no no sign changing at all. Okay, so let's talk about how I'm going to show you how to how to do a graph in this class. We're going to do we're going to go through a, it's going to be very systematic. We're going to do the same thing pretty much over and over again with minor variations. We will always find the period first, and then we'll take that period and divide it into quadrants because remember each graph is made from the unit circle and a unit circle has four different quadrants. So we're going to divide this into four quadrants which will actually result in five points, okay? Uh, the first point will be the horizontal shift. So regardless of, of if you know what we're doing at all, uh, if you can calculate the horizontal shift, you actually end up finding the first point automatically, okay? And what will then happen is I'm gonna show you kind of some uh, voodoo magic, uh, how to go ahead and find the other points. Now, most books, textbooks, uh, tutors, etc., they will do things very mathematically doing fractions and stuff. If you are confused as to how I do graphing with the five points in my videos, you're going to want to go ahead and study the book uh, to see how they do it mathematically. It's a lot more work. Um, it is methodical, but it's a lot of extra work, a lot of fractions you got to deal with in addition of uh, terms without common denominator. Okay? So just, a, just a heads up. What I'm showing you is pretty rare, pretty unique. Um, but first, going to summarize. summarize. In the function fx, f of x equals a sine bx plus c plus k, what does each part affect? So take a moment to uh, reflect on this. Very important. It'll help with your understanding with how we do the rest of the graph. All right, here's our first graph. And we're not going to mince words. We're going to go ahead and actually get down to business. Uh, so this is not the easiest problem. Uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be beefy. Let's do this. So first, I'm modeling for you how I would hope you do every problem from here on out when it comes to a graph. Okay. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and identify the parts A, B, C, and K. A will be the coefficient in front. Always keep the signs right. This is a positive, in, just in case it's not a negative. Just make sure make your aware it's a positive. B is gonna be a positive too. C is gonna be a negative pi. And there is no k, but I'm going to go ahead and add a k of zero. Okay, it's good to make that you make yourself aware of that. That way, you don't do anything dumb in the future. Okay, so you have everything accounted for. The amplitude is going to be the absolute value of a, right? Which is going to be just three. The period will be two pi over b. That'll be two pi over two. If you're wondering where I'm getting these formulas from. They were on the previous page. The twos cancel out and you get a pi. This is your period. Remember, this is a wavelength, right? This is how long the graph will go before it goes ahead and repeats itself and cycles through again. The horizontal shift. This is going to be negative C over B. So this is going to be a negative, negative pi over 2. So the formula itself has a negative. But you will hopefully recall that the C value had a negative of its own as well. That ends up giving me a positive pi over 2. Incidentally, this is a very important thing we just found because this happens to be the first point of our graph. Remember, we're going to graph these using five points, and we already gained one of those points. Okay. 
uh, increments. So this is something that a lot of books don't talk about at all. It's something that I kind of came along with. Uh, recognizing that the graph is made up of, of the unit circle quadrant, I divide this up into four parts, and it'll give us the four points that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the period and divide it by four. So that's going to be uh, pi divided by four. In other words, if you remember your unit circle, your just your, your classic unit circle goes from zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and then it goes back to two pi. In other words, from here to quadrant one, it's going to be pi over two, right? From here to here is also going to be pi over two. From here to here is another pi over two. And from here to here is another pi over two. So the increments for a unit circle, a classic unit circle, is going to be pi over two. You would recall it's the same thing with with a regular sign, right? It starts at zero. You know, it has um, this point up here at pi over two. It has one here at pi, three pi over two, and then two pi. So essentially, what I'm talking about is that notice how it, you can take every graph and just split it into four parts. However, there's five points total. One, two, three, four, five. And we've been showing you how to graph basically with five points. What we're doing now is we're going to be showing you and demonstrating for you how to find those five points, especially when everything shifts over. Okay. So what we have found with the horizontal shift, we've actually found the first point that will allow us to graph. The five points. <clears throat> Let us go ahead and do this. So, first, what we need to notice is the following. This is where it's going to hurt some of your brains a bit. I need, when I do this increment and this first point, notice I have them both in orange. This denominator is very important. It needs to be the same. Okay, so I know that my first point is going to be pi over 2, right? That's my first point. However, in order for my trick to work, these need to be the same denominator. So essentially, I want this right here, and then you might have to stop and pause and replay this over and over again for explanation until it makes some sense to you. We will do this many times, don't worry. But even though my first point is pi over 2, I need it to actually have a 4 in the denominator because I want to go up by pi over 4s. Okay? So it's like, it's like skip counting. If I want to count by 2s, you know, then I want to go 2, 4, 6, 8, right? Uh, if I'm going to go by 3, 3, 6, 9, 12. But in this case, I'm not going by that simple number like that. I'm going up by pi over 4s. Okay? So what is going to happen is instead of pi over 2, I'm going to actually rewrite this as 2 pi over 4. So the original point that was pi over 2, I'm making it into 2 pi over 4. Now, if you were to reduce that, you would get the same original, original problem. Okay? But again, the reason why I'm doing this is because I, I'm trying to get this to be the same denominator as, oops, same denominator as the increment. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, because what happens now is you'll notice that um, it's just, it's going to be the same. So now I'm going to go up by pi over fours. Okay, let me show you how this is going to help. One pi over four. So what will happen is I'm going to just go up by ones now. I'm going to add one to this. So two pi, three pi. 4 pi, 5 pi, and then 6 pi. So what's happening is each time, I'm, go, I'm, I'm notice a 1, right? I'm going up by 1. So I added 1 to that, added 1 to that, added 1 to that. Is it always 1? No. I want to do other examples where it's not 1. But again, the reason for this was I needed to make sure that I had the same denominators and that allowed me to go ahead and actually do the count. Okay. Now, why are we doing this? Because we are saving you a lot of math. Okay. And is this it? No, this is not it. Now I have to reduce, right? So this this 2 pi over 4 is actually pi over 2, right? When we reduce it, which is the first point. Okay, so these, we're doing this right because, I mean, when I reduce it, it becomes that. 3 pi over 4 stays the same, nothing to reduce. The 4s cancel out, leaving me a pi. 5 pi over 4. And then these reduce to give me 3 pi over 2. Now, it's very important, like, for your sakes, that if you need to go back and pause and replay this and figure this out, and you know, or, or move on and keep seeing some of the other examples, this is life-saving, okay? Because otherwise, we just skipped 
five unique problems where we are doing weird things like pi over two plus pi over four, you know, doing common denominators, doing stuff like that, and then taking that answer and then doing other things to it. And then on top of that, we're also saving the time of reducing. And even though this is a simpler problem, and you're thinking, okay, well, I can do the math for this. When we get to more difficult problems, the math becomes a lot more uh, intense. Okay, so I, it's, please, please, I'm begging you, try your best to see what I'm doing here. These are the five points that we need to graph. All right, so what's going to happen now is we're going to go ahead and make a sketch. Uh, the first point is a uh, pi over two. I'm just gonna eyeball this. Then I'm gonna put the other ones: three pi over two, pi, five pi over four, three pi over two. Traditional professors and teachers will actually force you to create all everything in between. I'm just focusing on the five because that's really all you need. These are the important points. Um, the amplitude is three, right? So I'm gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three. Make those asymptotes. This is a sine, and it's going to look like I start from here, right? This is my first point. Goes up to three, comes back down to the uh, to zero right here at pi, and then goes down to negative three and goes up to here, three negative three. So I connect those, and that's the graph. That's it. Okay, the explanation, believe it or not, was a lot longer than the process. It's pretty mechanical, it's pretty methodical. Let's try another one. I don't know if there's anything else that I want to talk about with this one. Nope. Okay. More shift. Ah, shift. Okay. So, let's do the same thing again. Let's go ahead and list our ABC. Okay, A is one, positive one, B is positive two, C is positive pi over two, and we have a K value. Okay, we didn't, the last graph we did, there wasn't a K value, so I didn't show you what to do with that. I will show you in this case what to do with that. All right, let's come up with the usual. We're gonna do the period. Sorry, this is the amplitude. Bad boy, it's going order. Amplitude. Amplitude has the absolute value of positive 1, which is going to be 1. Period will be uh, 2 pi over b, which is 2. So that's going to be a pi. Let's do the horizontal shift. This is going to be negative c over b. So we have a negative pi over 2 divided by 2. Which if I do the keep flip change thingy, I end up with this. Negative pi over 4. That's your first point. Remember, this is your first point. The increments, that's going to be period over 4. So the period is pi. Now, we got very lucky and fortunate with this one. And this is on purpose, right? Because I, I planned these problems out. These are the same. So I don't have to worry about doing any fancy stuff. I can just go ahead and start doing my points. So the five points, I'm going to start off with negative pi over 4. I'm not going to do any, any changes or any, any anything to it because you'll notice, again, the denominators are the same. So I'm going to start off with my first point. My first point is negative pi over 4. And I'm going to go up by 1. So this is if, this, if this is of any help, let me just tell you this is a negative 1. Right? So think of a number line. It's a negative 1. I'm going to go up by 1. So that's 0 pi over 4. Is it always going up by 1s? No. In this lecture video, that's all we did. In the next lecture video, you're going to see where we're going up by 3s, going up by 2s, etc. Okay, so it, it depends on the math. I'm just training you on the basics. So 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over fur, 3 pi over fur. Okay, we reduce these. This is 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 
and 3 pi over 4. We are ready to graph. The amplitude was 1, right? Those are the points. This is fascinating because this time it's a negative pi, so it starts over here, negative pi over 4. Then it hits 0, don't forget 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4. This is a sine. Remember the sine looks like it has this shape. Okay. And it has an amplitude of 1. So it would be like this, right? It would be one point here, and then oh, that's a so negative one is right here. There it is. Okay, one here, one here, one here, one down here, one down here, and this is what it would look like. Except, 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 we've got this thingy thing. Okay, it shifted everything up. What's going to happen is I'm going to take each of those points and I'm going to move it up by one. So this is going to move up to here, right? It moved one up. Okay, how do I know it's one up? Because it's positive one. This point up here, the max will move one up, so it goes up here. This point at the intercept will move up one right here. This point at negative one will move up to zero. And this point at zero will move up to one. So everything shifted up one. So folks, this is the actual graph. When you do these, it might be best to do it lightly with a pencil when you have a K value, okay? And then, so I would suggest, strongly suggest, graph it, pretend there's no K, and then when you realize that there is a K, if it's a positive one, of course, you move every, uh, each of those five points up by one. If it was a negative two, I would have moved each of those points uh, two down, okay? And then I would have redrawn the graph, okay? That's what a K does. And then I have no other comments about this one. That looked uh, good. Great. Summary. What are some key things to remember when graphing? 